be sure to follow me on Twitter. There you can keep up with all the updates from Comics Explained and talk to me directly. What's going on guys, this is Rob, and since a lot of you requested videos that are more condensed and time friendly, I figured I'd launch a companion series to my longer videos called N7 Minutes. Now the aim of this series is to give you all the same information you'll see in my longer character and team videos, but without all the extra fluff. And so in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about Daredevil. So Matt Murdock first appeared in Marvel Comics with Daredevil number 1 in 1964, and he was created by Stan Lee and Bill Everett. Now the origin of Daredevil follows that he saved a blind man from being hit by a truck carrying radioactive material, but he was exposed to the radioactive material himself and lost his sight in the process. And as a result, his other senses were enhanced, which allowed him to view the world around him using these enhanced senses. Now in order for him to cover his son's medical bills, and with little offering in terms of boxing matches, Matt Murdock's father, Jack Murdock, Murdoch turned to a mob boss for boxing matches to actually get the money he needed, but it was also during this time that Matt Murdock would begin training himself on how to use his senses. Now eventually, Matt Murdock enrolled and attended Columbia University where he actually met Foggy Nelson, and in addition to this, Matt chose to attend one of his father's boxing matches, but due to his son attending one of his matches, Jack Murdock, who had actually learned that all of his victories up to this point were fixed, chose not to throw the match, which he was informed to do by the mob boss himself, and as a result, he was killed by one of the mob boss's men. Now following the death of his father, Matt Murdock graduated from Columbia University with Foggy Nelson. He established Nelson and Murdock law offices and then he used his father's uniform to basically create a uniform for himself and then undertook the mantle of Daredevil. Now over the course of the 1960s leading into the 1970s, Daredevil actually saw several changes which included his costume being changed from his uh, yellow costume to his signature red costume with a double D on the front of it as well as the creation of some of his most notable villains in the form of Owl, Bullseye, and Gladiator, in addition to meeting Spider-Man and teaming up with Black Widow. Now by the late 1970s, the series was suffering from a decline in readership, but it was actually revived in 1979 by Frank Miller with issue number 158 of Daredevil. Now where previous stories had kept Daredevil in a relatively lighthearted tone, Frank Miller had scrapped virtually all of this and effectively rebooted Daredevil by not only making Daredevil a much darker character, but by also changing the origin story of Jack Murdock to making him a man who was a uh, abusive alcoholic as opposed to someone who was teaching Matt Murdock patience and, uh, and the value of education. Now in addition to the changes that were made by Frank Miller to Daredevil's character in history, Frank Miller also introduced the character of Stick as Daredevil's mentor as well as the love interest and eventual villain in the form of Elektra. Now while these changes had effectively split the Daredevil fan base down the middle, ultimately the Daredevil sales begin to increase and as a result, Frank Frank Miller's run has become the quintessential run of Daredevil in terms of his publication history. But following Frank Miller's critically acclaimed run on Daredevil, a handful of writers tried to undertake the mantle of continuing where Frank Miller left off. But the problem is that they were unsuccessful due to either being unable to continue writing for Daredevil due to their own particular assignments, or because they were simply unable to maintain the level of standard that Frank Miller had set. And so what we found was that in the late 1980s, that the Daredevil series was taken over by a woman named Anne Nicosinti, and Anne Nicosinti actually became the longest running writer for Daredevil, which lasted about four years, and she wrote between issues 238 to issues 291. Now, in addition to maintaining the darker tones that Frank Miller had established with Daredevil, she also began to focus on issues of feminism and drug abuse, and this actually led her to become, a, uh, I guess, a writer that contended with Frank Miller in terms of the publication history and the character development and reader involvement of Frank of uh, Daredevil and the Daredevil fans. Now from the 1990s leading into the 2000s, Daredevil continued to see a change in writing after Anne Nicosinti had left, and individuals such as Kevin Smith, Joe Kelly, Brian Michael Bendis, and even Ed Brubaker had taken on the position of writing for Daredevil, and each of them managed to contribute their own individual thing which would be rolled over into the next writer in terms of how it was Daredevil was written. But any kind of critically acclaimed stories that existed for Daredevil actually didn't really return until 2001 when Jeff Loeb had written the critically acclaimed story called Marvel Knights Daredevil Yellow. And what this did was effectively rewrite the history of Daredevil, not in an extreme degree the way that Frank Miller had done, but sort of fine-tuned things. And currently, as it stands now, in terms of Marvel leading into their 2015 summer event, Mark Wade is currently writing for Daredevil and is actually doing a pretty spectacular job at it. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.